Hi guys, my name is Josephine White and I am the owner of JoJo's House of Beauty. We are located in Grand Rapids, Michigan uh, on 44th Street. And I just wanted to tell you a little bit about me um, and kind of tell you how um, I got to where I am right now. So um, some people know me, um, a lot of people don't. If you're new to this YouTube channel, then I kind of just want to give you an intro of who I am. My name is Josephine White. I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. I was born and raised there. I attended Cass Technical High School. Um, it was there where I started doing hair at the age of 16. Um, I love doing hair. I love the fact that um, I could do people hair and they felt good about it. And not only that, um, you know, I would go to the hair salons on Saturday morning and sit there as there were other five other people waiting for an eight o'clock hair appointment. And I know you all can relate, especially as black women, we all can relate to that. Um, so while I was sitting there, I was just watching the stylists work. And I was like, I could definitely do these styles. Like I could do a ponytail back then, you know, um, twisties were in, I could do twisties. Um, and then later on, you know, flat irons became the thing, like loose, bouncy, curly flat irons. And I'm talking about probably, so I was 16, um, I graduated high school in 2003. So we're talking about like 2002, 2001 time, around that time, 2000. Um, so um, went to high school, cast tech, started doing hair there at the age of 16. Um, and I created my own business cards, honey. I had appointment time scheduled. Um, I would say my first, um, my first real client was my auntie Darlene. She definitely supported me in the beginning. Um, she paid me to do her hair. I think it was like $20 she would pay me. So I would do my auntie hair and I would do um, her friend's hair. So they would go out, you know, to parties and stuff. And I would do their ponytails and their twisties. And they were like my consistent clients. And then in high school, I did my own ponytails. And I was just started doing my friend's hair. So that's kind of how it kicked off. So fast forward, I graduated uh, from Cast Tech in 2003. And it's funny because my senior year, um, I was in the yearbook as most likely to be an entrepreneur. So that definitely stuck with me. So I graduated in 2003 from Cass Technical High School and I attended Western Michigan University. Um, it was there that I learned um, even more about doing hair. I taught myself how to do sew-ins, um, like individual braided sew-ins before they were a thing. Uh, I taught myself how to flat iron people here, um, impress people here. Um, and I, I mean, my, my dorm stayed busy, like JoJo's House of Beauty, was definitely um, dreamed of during this time. And it was funny because when I attended Western, people were like, so what do you wanna study? What do you wanna study? And I'm like, I guess I could study business. In the back of my mind, I always thought I wanted to own my own hair salon. Now I did not tell my mother this because my mother, you know, she's a single parent. Um, I'm going to college and they looking like, you know, my whole family like, you need to get a really good job. And you need to, you know, get a good job and you need to work that job and then you need to retire. <laughs> so, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what a lot of people in my family did. And they blessed me um, to be able to do the things that I wanted to do. Like my grandmother is one of the main uh, integral part of why I went to college is because she, you know, helped me like paid for my room and board my freshman year, paid for, you know, in addition to my scholarship. So I don't knock a nine to five. I don't knock people who work hard. Um, or work hard for somebody because more power to you. Like I'm, I'm living off the backs of my ancestors who've done that. So I don't, I'm, I don't downplay it at all. Um, but I knew that I wanted something different. Um, so in college I did hear, uh, I was very professional. I had business cards. I, you know, got people in, I got them out. And that was just something that stood out to me. Like People want an experience. I knew that people had things to do on Saturday. Like, I don't want to be at the salon from, I got an appointment at eight o'clock and I'm getting, not getting in the chair till 10. Like, that's just not fair. So I said, if I ever did here professionally, that's something I definitely wanted to stand out. Like, I want to get my clients in and out. I want to book accordingly. And what I've learned is, it's not just about booking. You know, I feel like I'm all over the place. So I will be all over the place in this video. <laughs> It's not just about booking people and like getting a whole bunch of clients. It's about the retention. It's about keeping those clients consistently and that they're your bread and butter. Like they come in every two weeks. So every two weeks, you're going to have a guaranteed $70 silk press or a minimum $60 silk press. I mean, my silk press started at $85 and 
they can go up to 125. So, you know, you, and that's just a shampoo, blow dry, and flat iron, like literally. So that's the thing, like if you are consistent and you work hard and you do great work, people will pay you to have their time back. Just FYI. So I'm gonna go back to college. Um, so I pledged Delta in 2005. Um, I did hair. I was known as the girl on campus that did hair and she was a Delta and she loved Jesus. Like that was me. Um, so, you know, the time was coming for me to graduate in 2007. And I got my first job out of college. I was an ETL at Target. So executive team lead um, over the guest experience. So I was pretty much over the front end of the store. So the guest, the guest uh, desk, the cashiers, the different boats around the um, Target. So like the jewelry boat and I think even the electronic boat during that time. But a lot has changed with Target over these last years. So I graduated in 2007, got my first corporate job. And y'all, I hated it. Like, first of all, I'm in Holland, Michigan. I'm 22 years old. I'm black. <laughs> I'm from Detroit. Um, and I remember just feeling like I was black. Like, I, I mean, going to West Michigan from Detroit, from the east side of the state of Michigan was definitely different. But going to Holland was a whole nother experience. Um, and it was there that I remember talking to God. And I've always been close with Jesus. Like, um, I've always had a relationship with him probably since I was 14. Um, I didn't grow up with my father. He left when I was three. So that relationship came. Uh, I feel like, definitely feel like Jesus sought me to um, make me better because I was looking for love in all the wrong places. So, you know, um, when the opportunity came for me to work corporate America, I knew that it's not. It was something I didn't really want to do, but I did it because I wanted to do it for my family. You know, they said you get a good job, you go to college, and you graduate, you get a good job. That's what they told me. But I just felt like it was so much more for my life than just that. And I felt it when I was working there. I knew that I wanted something different. I knew that I wanted something to call my own. And I always loved doing hair. And what I found was in Holland, you would have a lot of white parents who adopted black children. And what I noticed is that they weren't keeping their hair up. They just didn't know what to do with the hair texture. And one lady at my job, she worked um, in the back room of Target. And I remember her bringing her daughter up to Target and her hair was a mess. And I didn't want to offend her. I just pulled her to the side probably a couple of days later. And I was like, hey, you know, if you ever need help with your daughter's hair, let's let me know. You know, I'm here, I'm here to help you. Actually, I do hair. I did it in college. I'm, I'm not licensed, but I'm really good at it. And she was like, oh my God, I've always wanted to ask you that. I've seen your hair and it always looks so nice. Uh, definitely, I want to use your services. So that's when I just started kind of doing hair again. Now, mind you, I was working at Target, so I was working 12 hours a day sometimes. And I was working at least four to six days a week. I mean, you would have some days where you're working six days straight, 12 hour days. And that was just corporate America. That was retail. And I would still go home and do hair because I just missed doing hair. Um, I missed the interaction with people. I missed the way it made people feel. And I and I was good at it. Like pretty, I was very efficient with my time. Like I could do a silk press back then. I could do a silk press in 30 minutes. Um, Cause I just moved fast. And it wasn't like I was burning people hair out. I was just very efficient. Uh, and I moved really fast. I think I learned that pleasure in Delta, which is a whole nother conversation. <laughs> because I definitely did hair online. So if you pledge a sorority or fraternity, you understand what I'm saying in this moment. But, um, so I started to say, I knew that there was something else for me to do. Um, and I, even when I was tired, even when I, my days off from Target, I still wanted to do hair. And I did, like I would go to Kalamazoo and do hair. I would drive to Detroit and do hair on my days off. And I would hang on my friends from college. And I knew that, it was time. So it was an incident that happened at my job, which kind of propelled me to leave my corporate job to go to hair school. Pretty much, um, it was an incident with a customer and she pretty much lied on me. And my boss believed the customer. Um, my boss had pretty much called the direct team lead, like, this is what happened. This is what the worker did. You know, she never came to me first. She went directly over my head, believed the customer. And pretty much I was thrown under the bus by my own boss. And, you know, in that moment, I was really hurt because I was like, man, like, you know me 
for the, for like five months. Like you, you really believe this customer over me. You didn't even get my side of the story, which is a, a whole nother conversation and a whole nother thing, you know, being black, living in Holland, Michigan, um, there's a predominantly white city, uh, Dutch Christian reform city. Um, I just realized like, there's no winning for me in this store, let alone in corporate America in West Michigan. So when I left that day after I got pretty much put on like the top suspect, like pretty much it was like, if you do anything else wrong, you can be fired immediately. So it was a very hostile work environment because if any of my green cards that went down to red, it was like, I could be fired. If I got another complaint against me from a customer, I could be fired. I mean, if anybody complained against me, I could be fired. So to be in that position at 22 in your first job where the incident wasn't even really your fault, it literally, it just, it tore me up. Like I started working 16 hour days just to make sure that I would have this job and I would, you know, I was doing the right thing. But I realized, I remember coming home from um, work one day and I got on my knees and I prayed and I was like, Lord, I love doing hair. I'm like, if you give me the opportunity to leave this job, first, give me the faith to do it. And second, just let me know that you're gonna provide financially because you know people tell you, you, you don't leave a job until you have another job. And I, I didn't have another job. I wanted to go to hair school. Like that was my goal. I wanted to go to hair school. So, um, I was toiling back and forth. I was still working, still trying to decide if I was going to stay at this job or look for another job, but I was in the thick of it. <clears throat> so what happened was I was coming back from Detroit. I went home to Detroit for a weekend to see my family, just to check on them and get out of Holland. And it was snowing and I was on M6, which is a pretty open freeway headed towards Holland, Michigan. And when I say that I was driving perfectly fine, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, my car just spinned out, complete 360 in the middle of the freeway, and I ended up in a ditch and I couldn't see anything. And all I kept saying was Jesus, 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 Jesus. Like that's all I kept saying. And then I had it got quiet because the car stopped spinning. And I pretty much ended up in a ditch. And God said, "Clear as day to me, even when you're not in control, I'm in control." And that moment I knew it was time for me to leave this job because I knew that there was more to my life than just this thing, this job. So that day I went home, I typed up my two weeks notice and I put it in. And literally it was the scariest thing I'd ever done. I think I might've told my family, I might've not, I just, I think I just did it. And then um, I had already had a trip planned to go to North Carolina to see my sands. So I put my two weeks notice in, went to North Carolina. And then once I came back from North Carolina, I started looking at hair schools and enrolled in hair school in like March of 2008. So I went to hair school. I had top, top scores, perfect attendance. Like y'all, I, I thrived in hair school because it was something that I loved. Um, and when I say God provided for everything that I needed in that space, he provided everything that I needed. Like, Financially, I mean, I was working, yes, I was working at a call center, but even unemployment, he provided unemployment and I quit my job. Like I put in my two weeks notice, but this is right in the middle of a recession. You guys remember 2008 was the middle of that when the recession first started. And, you know, these big companies trying to get rid of people and I fell subject to that. So they found a way to get rid of me, you know, because of a complaint of a customer and that's how they try to get rid of me. So. It was just perfect. I could end up getting back pay. Like when I say God provided y'all, he just looked out greater than I can ever think or imagine. Okay. So I'm in hair school. He provided everything that I needed. Got, you know, got great scores, um, competed nationally in Pennsylvania with Empire Beauty School because that's what it was chic at the time and then Empire bought it. So when I graduated, it was Empire Beauty School. Um, so I graduated in 2009. I actually ended up staying later because I wanted to compete nationally, uh, but I would have finished in a year. Um, and then it was funny because I was looking for jobs before I had graduated, which is something I always learned in college. Like you never wait until you're done. You know, you look for the job probably three or four months before you're about to graduate from college. 
So I found this salon on 44th Street in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And it was funny because I was actually looking for a job at the JCPenney catalog. And it was across the street. It was a little house. Um, and I walked into the salon and nobody was in there. It was just the owner at the time was uh, George Scar. And he, you know, him and his wife, they were in the process of going through a divorce. But, you know, I told him, like, I'm looking to work at a salon that I can learn how to do other textures besides my own. I already knew how to do curly hair. I knew how to do, you know, silk press. I knew how to do sew-ins. Like I knew how to, I understood curly hair, but I wanted to understand straight hair. I wanted to understand how to cut with texturizing shears and razors and, you know, point cutting and all these different techniques that I've seen white stylists do during that time that I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn about color, you know, during that time, um, we, you know, we are now, and I don't get it wrong, black people can do some color now, but back then it wasn't a thing. You know, people weren't really doing color like that or like fashion colors and, you know, just all kinds of different things. Um, so I wanted to learn that and I went to an all white salon. I was the only black stylist there. And it was funny because when I first met Barb, who was the owner, um, she said to me like, you could buy my salon. Now y'all listen, this is a house. Like literally it's a house. It used to be a house. It was like a medical building and then it became a bank and then it became a hair salon. So it had been a hair salon for like 20 something years before I even got there. And when I say God directs you exactly where you need to be, like he sent me to Grand Rapids, Michigan to go to hair school to find a salon that's a house. So JoJo's House of Beauty is literally a house of beauty. Like it just blows my mind. Like, like literally, like God would do that for you. Um, so I started working at this salon. I pretty much got the job, Johnny on the spot. We met a couple of times. So I told her like, I want to learn how to do textures and she wanted to have a salon that could do textures. Um, but there's this, there's, there was this, this barrier to there, you know, people want that diversity of having a diverse salon, which is something that I've always wanted, but there is, there is tension. Like it's something that you have to break a stereotype. And I feel like I'm going all over the place in my subject. So I'm sorry, but you know, I want a diverse salon where every texture could come in and be serviced. Now we don't do everything, but at least anybody who walked in a haircut, uh, uh, a, a highlight, you know, a perm, a relaxer, like we can do it. Um, the basic, I feel like everybody should have the basic education of all textures. Like you shouldn't let leave no money on the table. And that was my thought and my vision. And then there's people who just need help. Like there's white parents who have black children who need help understanding their children's hair. And there's black parents who have black children that need help understanding their children's hair. So I wanted my salon to be all those things. But in order for my salon to be those things, I had to be those things first. And I had to display that that's what I wanted. So I sacrificed a lot working at this salon. Um, it was Heresy Salon. Um, but I learned a lot. I learned a lot about retailing. Like, we retail at my salon now. And we we do over 30 k in retail, just in re retail sales by itself. Um, that might not be a lot to some people. But to me, as a small business, like, uh, not even 1,900 square foot salon, like, that helps my salon sustain itself. Um, and I've taught my team how to retail and it's not about selling, you know, a prize. It's about helping our clients maintain their investment. So let me go back. Um, yeah. So the opportunity came, she asked me like, do you want to buy my salon? I was like, absolutely. So it took me five years to buy her salon. And it took five years because I wanted to build up my clientele. I wanted to see like what this would look like. And I just watched her. I watched her as a business owner. I learned a lot of the things that I should do. A lot of, I learned a lot of things that I shouldn't do. Um, and I just learned so much during those five years. And I would say the last two years was the process of me actually going through buying a salon. So we had to get our own separate lawyers. We had to get a purchase agreement. We had to come up with a price. Um, a com and I bought the building and the business. So we had to come up with a price for the building. We had to come up with a price for the business and you know what it was worth and you know, how, what all products I'll be taking over from her. What, how much was the, the worth of the products and how much the worth of the, um, the tools and the, not tools, I'm sorry. How much worth the equipment and the desk, all those different things. You have to write everything out and, and put a price next to it. So it was a process and I'm not one to rush into anything. Um, I'm very big on like, I wanted to pay off my debt. You know, I wanted to make my husband, I met my husband during this time before, um, when I was in the process of like do starting doing here, I met John John, which is my husband. I met him in 
2010. So I was in the process. I was two years, a year and a half into doing hair behind the chair. I mean, I, my first year behind the chair, I made $10,000, y'all, commission. Like, no money. Like, my rent was pretty much almost $10,000 a year, you know? So it's one of those things, like, my rent was probably half of that, like five, because I think I was paying like six seventy five dollars a month or something. So probably a little, like half of what I was making. Um, so what I've learned during this time is that when you own, a, if you're trying to own your own business, this, these are a few hints. I'm going to put everything together in this thing. Be intentional about what you're trying to do. So, you know, when I knew I wanted to have my own salon, um, so what I did was, I worked commission a couple years. I worked booth rental a couple years. I got an accountant to help them to show like, hey, each year of me doing here, I increase my income every year. And um, I was intentional about watching the previous salon owner. What did she do? What mistakes was she making? Why she never raised her prices as a, as a salon owner? Why wasn't her price the highest price? Like, why was she giving away free services? You know, like um, how stress can kill you as a salon owner, how a bad relationship can kill you and how sometimes you have to separate your marriage from your business, you know? So I learned a lot during those times watching her. Um, and I learned a lot of good things. I learned about retail. I learned about, um, you know, investing in your stylists, you know, gifting them things to make them feel like, you know, to, to show your appreciation as an owner. I've learned, um, you know, how to set up my business. Like they had their business set up where their building was an LLC and then their actual business was incorporated. So she was an employee of her business and she, you make a salary and then you pay rent to your building, you know, um, and all those different tax benefits. You know, I, I learned a lot during this time um, of just watching them and I would ask all kinds of questions. You know, I learned that commission as a commission salon you know, it's better for you as an owner because not only does it create cohesiveness, it puts everybody on the same page, which is cohesiveness. It Everybody uses the same products. Um, everybody gets trained the same way. Everybody answers the phone the same way. You become a team. You know, like there's benefits to having a commission-based salon and that's what I wanted. I wanted a team. I wanted where we help each other. I wanted where this is not just my client. Like if I'm not available, you can go to this person and that's okay. It's not a bad thing, you know? And we had to train our our clients to understand that, especially as in the black community, because they'll be like, oh, well, I don't want to make the other stylist mad. I'm like, it's not about making other stylists mad. It's about everybody can win in this situation. If I'm booked and you have the time as a stylist, why would I not bless you with this client? Um, and the client doesn't belong to me. The clients belong to the salon, JoJo's House of Beauty. So, you know, there was just a lot of things I learned Um and I'm still learning. You know, I've had my, I bought my salon in 2014. Um, it's been, it'll be seven years in July. July 9 is when I bought it. Um, and I have, it took a long time to build a team. This is the first time, and this is 2021. I finally got a team, I would say the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, like where I, we had at least five other people in the salon besides myself and my manager, which is Sherry. And Sherry has been amazing. Sherry came into my life um, a year after me opening up JoJo's House of Beauty. And when I say she's a hard worker, she was ready. Like, Sherry, I remember asking her, like, if I were to die, like, what would you do? And she literally said to me, um, if your husband were to keep the salon, I will continue your legacy. And in that moment, I knew, I was like, I have somebody who's, thinks just like me and who loves my salon just as much as I do. And I've always asked her like, hey, like if you want to go to Booth Rental, if you want to, you know, branch out and try something new, I never want you to feel like you're stuck with me. And I never want people to feel like they're stuck with me ever. And she was like, no, like I like it here, you know. So I'm just thankful that God sent me Sherry. I'm thankful that he sent me a team. After five years of being in business, I finally got a full team and then COVID hit, which is a whole nother conversation. But the team ended up coming back. So it was a blessing for sure. But I saw it today to say, uh, if you want to own a business, y'all, there's a lot of journeys and valleys and highs and lows to own a business. But find your way and be intentional about what you want and speak into existence what you want and willing to do the work. Now, the first year of me owning this salon, baby, listen, I worked six days a week. 
I was there for 12 hours a day sometimes. Like my husband was like, I am tired of you in this salon. Like I knew he was tired of me, but he was an awesome provider. He was an awesome support system. Um, and even in that, you know, I, we prepared to own the salon and he don't know that. But you know, when he graduated college, he's three years younger than me. So I was already kind of in corporate America. I left corporate America and I was in hair school. So I was kind of starting over with him. Like I just graduated hair school when I met him. He had just graduated college. So we both were building together. And what we found was it was, you know, my husband, he got his first corporate job. And I just told him like, babe, I really think that we should pay off this debt. Like he had, we had my car, his car. And then we had like, he had $50,000 in student loans. I didn't have any student loans from college. Only loan I had was from hair school, which was about $10,000. So to combine, he had $75,000 worth of debt. We took the first two years of our marriage. We got married in 2000, um, 2012, we got married. We took the first two years of our marriage. So 2014, I bought the salon. 2012, we got married. We took those first two years and paid off $75,000 worth of debt. Because to me, I don't like debt hanging over my head. And what it does is it just puts you in a financial strain to do to not have the freedom to do the things you want to do. So when we did it, it was like the perfect time. Like we paid off our debt and then I got the opportunity to buy the salon. We just finished up doing all the like paperwork of that. And when I say God, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like God just worked things out perfectly, but you also have to be strategic in what you're doing. You know what you want in your life do it intentionally. Like don't do anything just to be doing it. Everything you do has to have a purpose, whether it's networking, whether it's um, paying off debt, whether it's, you know, buying a house, like set yourself up so that you're not putting, you're not being house poor or business poor, or, you know, just poor in general, build wealth for yourself and surround yourself with people that can get you to where you want to be. Uh, and it's not about using people. It's just listening and observing and understanding what they're doing and people might not look like you that's doing these things and that's okay too so you know this is my story i feel like i'm all over the place this is a lot if you want to fast forward i get that but i just wanted to kind of give you a little background about me as josephine white um uh salon owner stylist um entrepreneur and wife uh child of god like i just wanted to give you my story and my testimony and how god is moved me and propelled me into these certain spaces um and that's pretty much my story i mean it's so much more to it but i don't want to drag it out so if there's anything else you want to know about me as a salon owner i would love to tell you um joseph house beauty will be seven years uh this july 9 2021 i actually just relocated to california um, and I did keep my salon. I still have my team. They're still there working. They're amazing. They're an amazing group of women. Um, and I'm just thankful that my husband got an opportunity for us to leave Grand Rapids, Michigan and move to California. And we took the opportunity and now we're in California and I'm excited to see what God is going to do next. You know, people are like, you should open another one. I'm like, I don't know. You know, so I'm open to whatever God will do. I'm just trying to walk in that space um but i'm thank you for watching and please like subscribe comment below if you have any questions or thoughts i know it was a lot of information i know i talked a lot but i just want to you know let y'all know what's going on so i appreciate you so much and uh i hope this blesses the person that needs to hear this that's always my prayer that these videos find the right people so please share if you know anybody that needs some encouragement um i appreciate it that's my ask for this video. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.